Here I'm going to show you how to incorporate the uh, controller for the uh, RMC 260 and the um, ATEM and how we're going to use it to allocate uh, separate cross points for each of the input buttons which at this stage uh, are eight buttons which is black one two three four five six seven uh, six and background which is eight buttons I'm going to work on some software to be able to actually use the still button for uh, another cross point allocation that, that requires a slightly different technique with the um, with the reverse engineering but the same buttons also uh, exist in the preview row so you'll end up having black which you can allocate to be black or you can actually using the interface box you can actually change it to a cross point if you need um, if you need that many inputs um, so you'll end up having uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine actual inputs, which is um, three more than you would have on a TVS. But if, if you're actually interfacing to a ATEM uh, 2ME, um, or if you want to use it with a 4K, you can. Um, you can uh, allocate these buttons with um, inputs as well. So I'm going to show you how to how to do that using how to allocate the individual cross points, ATEM cross points for these all the active buttons, and um, that will uh, that is all done through this box here. Um, I'll also have a, um, a HTML interface available one day sometime. So. Um, just a very quick overview here. You can see how the, um, the during normal operation the uh, interface box is actually showing you what's on the program row and what's on the preview row. Now these um, these values are actually what the ATM has. So that's telling me the program row has black and the preview row has the super source. And the number next to it, it actually tells you which button on the control panel um, has that particular ATEM source allocated to. So you can see currently the uh, RMC control panel has black showing on the program row and has got BKG which is its labeling on the preview row. So if you have a look at the display it shows you button number one has got black and button number on the preview row, button number eight has got the super source. And if you count that down, you've got hard finger focus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Button eight is the super source. So now, if we go over to the ATEM and using my mouse, I let's say go to um, camera one on the program row, you'll see now it's changed to one. I'm going to go to two. It's changed to two, go to three, it's changed to three. And then if you have a look down here now, you'll see it's actually telling us that camera three is now selected on the uh, ATM, um, which is allocated to button number four. One Button number one, button number two, button number three, button number four. So that's um, relatively simple. And again, if you, um, if you just hit the buttons here, you'll see as I'm changing the buttons here, um, you'll see that they're changing up here and then you'll see that they're also changing down here and of course on the preview row as well. Um, so as I go up the um, buttons on the preview row for instance you'll see it goes five, um, six, I've got color bars allocated to button number seven and I've got super source allocated to button number eight. So um, if we do a um, focus here again if we just do a transition, you'll see they toggle over at the end. I'm doing this over arm at the moment. So you toggle over the M, uh, over the end, and again, if we do the same thing with the transition, you'll see when we get to the end they swap over as well. So that's just kind of showing you the um, the full status. I mean, on the on the ATEM's control panel itself, it has its own built-in display in the panel that shows you that information. So I've kind of extended that 
that functionality to um, to the control box which you can put anywhere I mean you probably end up having it sitting up here somewhere on the panel um, I'm, I'm planning on having my um, 7 inch touch screen up here but the, the little controller box um, you can have it either here or you can have it off the side amongst the rubbish this is all rubbish down here um, but at the moment it's sitting there because I'm, I'm, um, it's best to show it that way there um, so basically what I want to show you is how to um, allocate those cross points which is um, relatively simple as all we do as you saw in the last video we just push the button once quick push and we go into the configuration manager I'm going to swap hands now and um, I'm now going to scroll down to um, the um, configuration menu function called set program preview cross points um, if you don't have an ATEM connected at the time you can't you can't go in and change these because it relies on using all the naming conventions that come out of the ATEM and if there's no ATEM connected well then you've got no access to those names so, so that you find as you scroll through here um, of course you can always set the IP addresses but you'll find that it'll jump over the next four menu items and um, Incidentally, this white pattern, uh, you'd be able to set um, the actual what wipes code, what wipes you want allocated to these buttons. If I can get this thing to, there you go. So these are all wipe um, buttons, and as you can see, there's only yeah, there's not that many. I mean, that's reverse. I'm trying to use the same naming names that they use on on their panel to minimise the amount of relabeling. Um, which which will go into more of those buttons later on. Um, so so they're the they're the menus. The white pattern also will not show if there's no ATEM connected. Um, th these are just some of the other configurations which I'll show, give you videos on later on. That's obviously showing the active. You can select which one of the DSK the two DSKs to use this DSK button here because there is only. Um, one DSK button you can then use the control panel here to um, to select which particular DSK you want that button to control and incidentally this control panel or all this configuration is actually um, it's mo it's using a, a very special technique I've got which is multitasking the controller so what we still uh, we can still be using our switcher panel up here while we're in configuration mode so it's actually doing all the things it needs to do here we go I'm going again go up to here here I am and that's why we're in configuration mode so you can actually be changing uh, things like your DSK or your, your cross point allocations while you're actually live um, which become, makes, makes it a bit of an operational feature anyhow more on that later um, here you can change the active ME if you're using a 2ME you can actually tell it which ME you want it to control. Uh, we'll go into that later on. Um, th these are yet to be assigned. Um, coming as I as I add more features, I then will um, add them into the configurations. Uh, and there's unlimited number of um, uh, configuration values. I can you know, have thousands there, but that's an awful lot of knob turning. Um, here, uh, this is at the, near the end, this is at the, the real business end of things. Uh, you can actually set, uh, there's a connector on the back here, mind my, this ribbon cable is only for my diagnostics um, port, it, uh, won't, well, it's not there in the normal unit, but here is a 25 pin D connector, which has power and ground on it, but it also has 23 pins that you can actually use, set up in here to do anything you want, from doing program row tallies to preview row tallies uh, to GPI in to, to trigger functions um, and that will all be able to be pre-programmed in in this particular menu here and we'll get to that later on too that's rather complicated to set up that one uh, and then the very last menu item um, you can actually um, just click the button and it'll show you the, the current um, version software version and the current serial number of the, of the unit. Each, each one of these controllers will have its own unique serial number. Um, and um, 
so that's basically what um, what all some of those menus are. We'll go far into depth of those later on. So I'm just going to come out here. I'm just going to go back to um, setting, uh, allocating the inputs to the um, to the program preview rows. So once we have that menu item selected, we then hit the button once, quick push, and now you can scroll through. I'm uh, just using using the, the, the knob. I can scroll through each of the seven, which I've currently got going, um, buttons. Now you'll see the, these are actually these labels. So that says button BKG, because that's what the buttons actually call on the panel. So I just wanted to make sure that people understood that they're programming the buttons as they're labelled here. So if I go all the way back to here, to button the very first entry item, you'll see that that says button black or BLK, which is what the buttons call there. Um, and you can see here I've actually got allocated black to that. But let's say I don't want that to be black, uh, apart from the fact that I have to relabel the button on the panel if I didn't want it to be black, which is no big deal, which incidentally, if you wanted to relabel these, these are key caps, you can take them off and you can put your own little cell in there with your own with your own label, it doesn't have to be black. Um, but I'm, as I said, I'm keeping the label minim minimised for the moment, but I'll probably change them anyhow. So, um, so if I want to change that input on the black button, um, I just push the button once, quick push, and now what happens, you see there's a little um, th thing uh, flashing here, it's a very technical term thing, but um, it, it, I use that to indicate that we're in adjust mode where we're, and we're adjusting it. So now as we turn the um, uh, the knob, it, it starts to cycle through all the available inputs. Now what that also is doing while I'm cycling through, it's also changing, go up to here, all the way up to here, it's actually changing the source on the preview row to match the source that we've selected here. So if you're not quite sure what input name it is on the ATEM, you can just visually verify it. Um, and as I turn this around, you'll see as I'm turning it around, it's changing, there you go, it's gone to non-input, so if I go up to, there's another input, that says camera 13 on my input, that's the, these are just the way I've got things patched into my ATEM, now that says colour bars, obviously that's colour bars, uh, that's colour 1, that's colour 2, if you come down here you'll see that says that's colour 2, so as, as you're changing the inputs here, and you can see we're still in adjust mode, it's um, telling you the name of that input and, um, and of course we're, we're still programming button BLK which is button BLK which is up here and again at any time um, we're, do, we're doing this programming the panel is still able to be used so you can actually do a hot uh, button allocation which if I get focus, yeah, gonna focus so you can still do a hot button uh, allocation while you're still um, while you're still in normal operational mode, so you can actually be changing an input on the same button that's selected, and then once you hit enter, then that button will still say the same until you hit that button again, and it'll change the new input. Um, so once you um, once you have selected the input that you want on that black button or on, on the button I have selected, which is black at the moment, I can actually. Uh, hit enter. I'm just going to go colour one two for instance because that's kind of black but it's an orange black. So I just hit the button once and you'll see that the little thing stops flashing and nothing else has changed except now if I use the um, the, the, um, the knob let's now go to the next input and the next input but if we go back to the BLK button you'll see now it's memorised colour one two or sorry colour two and um, we can then go through and change um, the allocations on the other buttons. Now you, you probably noticed that I had one button there allocated as um, colour bars. No, I didn't. Did I? There it is. Yeah, button number six was colour bars. Again, I can hit the, I can hit the um, uh, adjust, and now I can um, change that to a value that I want. So I'm going to make that say colour one. Um, now after doing that, without doing, without coming out of the configuration mode, we're still in that. You see now that if I go to um, button number uh, or button black, um, there it is up there. There's button black. So, so there's your program has now got 
color two has been allocated to to, to the black button and you also notice that on a, I'm just going to hit six go up here again I hit six and that's the other color so there's um, black which I've allocated as color two and there's button number six which I've allocated a color one now if I go to the BKG button I've got to allocate it to super source and there it is there so you can see how quick and easy um, you can um, just reallocate the any input of the ATEM to any of the lesser number of buttons on the uh, RMC and of course um, once we have finished with the um, cross point adjustments we just do a long push and we've come out and then we can then come out of that and there we're back into normal mode and um, and as we change our cross points it's everything's working and um, everything's been um, stored you can just go there, there's your, cut, there's your uh, input 6 or your button 6, there's your black button and um, there's your other buttons and of course the other ones are the individual cameras which I've got nothing on them at the moment um, and um, there you go, so we're, we're really only just touched the surface on um, some of the things we're doing, doing with all this and I um, shortly will have yet another video available for you thank you and good night